Thanks, Will. First, thanks so much for having me. Um, and just a quick loop, Jeanette, um, Noelle started with me when I first started Beautiful Days, when she was just first starting out, and we sat in her little red house that she and Adam were living in, caretaking in, on the York Harbor River. We came, I came with her with an idea. I said, I've got 5,000 bucks, let's do this. Let's build a website, and this was before Facebook, right? I mean, I, now I feel so old. Long time ago. No babies, we were married, you know, all that kind of stuff. Uh, but this is really, I, um, and there are a couple of people in here who, through the years, have helped foster what I do, um, which I'll speak to along the way, but um, I think just really lovely. I promise I wouldn't cry. You know, it's such a, no. Um, yeah, full circle, for sure. And happy to be here. Love where I live, love the community that I, my husband um, and my family live in. I feel um, eternally grateful and blessed every day. So thank you for allowing me to um, share a little bit of um, myself and what I do. Um, so first, love what you are, which I think is a challenge. I think that a lot of us here in the creative world may have a bit of a challenge in defining what we do because we're not just creative directors, you know, we're not just owners, we're not just designers. Sometimes we're the boss. It took me a couple years to embrace that. Like if you are running your own business and driving the machine and wanting to get your work out there, sometimes you're a boss. It took me a couple years to embrace that. Um, I personally thought that all these disparate things that I loved throughout my life, music, food, art, fashion, photography, didn't make any sense except that they filled me up but it actually seemed to really serve at least the work that I do. And I think that that is also part of um, the creative world that a lot of us do work in, the, the pieces that fill you up. And I'll speak to that a little bit. Um, I am a gardener, that's my happy place. I'm a mama, I love being a mama. I'm a better half, some days not the best half, but I try. Um, creative, creative adventurer, something I'll speak to a little more, something that fills me up and sometimes surfer. I love the ocean. I grew up on the ocean. Um, so I love what I am. And I think that beyond our work, um, that we have all these pieces that define who we are and the work that we do and the work that we put out there, in the, and especially in the creative world. A lot of us probably aren't sitting at the desks every day looking at Excel spreadsheets, although that is a lot of what I do. Boring as shit, but we got to do it, right? <laughs> like, you can be as creative as you want to be, but... Um, <laughs> These are the things that hopefully kind of help me work towards putting out the work that I love. Um, approaching this talk was a little challenging. Love is such a lofty subject. It's not even a subject. I mean, it's a universal, you know, covers us all. So I did my best to kind of rein it in and how I feel that love and its capacities and in its emotion um, informs me and helps me and guides me towards um, the work that I do and the work that I do with my clients. Um, I'm not trying to define what love means. There's no way, it means something for everyone. Today for me, it tastes like pasta pomodoro, smells like babies, duh, uh, and sounds like a brass band. At least that's what love is for me today. Um, the title, as I was kind of working it through, about keeping it real and connected to the work that we do. Um, spoke to me because I want to make sure that when I do my work, I am as focused on what makes me feel good, what I love, what turns me on, and that can only serve um, my clients and the work that I do better. It's hard to do. Some, we all trip, we all stumble, we all make mistakes. We all pick out that wrong thing and we propose, like, what was I thinking, man? Let's, let's you know, back up a little bit and, and restart. Um, but I, I really just wanted to kind of focus on how that um, love and the parts and pieces in your day and in your life can move you forward in the work that you do. Um, so moving on, I landed on three main things. Love is light, love is bold, and it fills you up. So love is light, this is my personal piece that um, is a touchstone for me. Because um, we all have our defini definitions of love and, and what it feels like for us and how it envelops us. Um, 
a number of years ago, 15 plus years ago, we had an unfortunate situation come up in my family um, that really challenged me and my family personally. I had a dream. And I'm not a big touchy-feely person. I believe in karma, spirits, whatever. I had this dream that was myself searching in a neighborhood that was somewhat familiar. And I was looking for something. And I came upon light. And this to me was not you know, oh my gosh, this is God, this is it. This, it was really just this light that enveloped me, that assured me, that gave me power, and that gave me warmth. And that was something that came to me at a time when I think I needed it for myself, for my family, for my husband, um, and for um, most specifically my mom. So that is my touchstone. That is what I call upon when I am either doubting where I am doubting what I'm doing, um, doubting the um, confidence that we all need to put out good work. So that's my personal touchstone. In this, in developing this talk, I realize that, that, what, that this is my touchstone, that that light is my touchstone. Again, not too touchy-feely, but it is, I feel like we all have something personal for us that is our touchstone that we need to check in with, that we need to remind ourselves what love means to us and then make sure that we hold on to it and um, carry it through our day or our week or a hard time or a great time. Um, there's a lot of, um, I think, power to acknowledging the love that works for you. I think that within that power, it, is, it can be extremely motivating and gratifying um, and sustains you through your day, sustains you through your projects, sustains you through that pitch to a client that you're wondering, are they going to really dig what I'm saying? If it's coming from your heart, hopefully they will. Um, also, this touchstone for me circles me back on what is really important. You know, we all have those days. Oh my gosh, accounting, sales tax. Are my sales taxes due today? You know, but it'll all get done. You're the boss, oh, payroll, shit. Oh. Uh. But in the end, this touchstone that we all have, whatever it is for you, reels you in and brings you back to what is most important to you. For me, it's my family um, and my garden and the ocean. But I use that as my touchstone, that light. So hopefully you all have your light, whatever it is, whatever form it is, that you can use to regroup with. Um, love is bold. It's boundless, it's brave, it's risky, it's adventurous, it's vivid, it's bright. These girls are awesome. I can't do this, but I can love this. I can be inspired by this. It can inform how I get through my day. It can inspire me to get out of a rut. I haven't sat down and looked at this book in a while, but when I did and when I was developing what I wanted to speak to, I kept coming back to something like this. How many of us could go out on the street like this? Not, right? But how many of us could look at this and be like, shit, I wish I had that. But, but we do. We have it in us. We have the boldness. We have the brightness. We have that adventurousness in us, I think, especially as creative people. It's just a matter of figuring out how to tap into it. Um, it's outrageous. It's unexpected. Um, I find that a lot of my inspiration um, even before I was working in for, even before I started Beautiful Days, has always come from art, from fashion, from music. Um, there is no such thing, at least as far as I'm concerned, in my field as an original idea. I do not claim to be an artist. I do not claim to put something brand new out to the world. Only true artists and true, real, new thinkers have that. People like David Bowie. You know, people like Jean-Paul Gaultier. People like E.E. Um, e. Cummings, um, they're artists. They let their boldness, their adventurousness, their spirit trickle down to you, regardless of whether it's in your realm of work. If you are in a creative world, whether you're wordsmithing, like creative trouble, uh, communications troublemaker, Amy Sterndale, who I love that she's a, crea a communications troublemaker, uh, whether you are physically creating something like my husband, who is a carpenter and a craftsman, and he, and he pours his heart and soul into what he does. 
half the time it's stuff for me. Um, whether you are designing a website, putting together a logo, I'm sure there are times when those of you in the creative graphic world get sick and tired of potential clients coming to you, like, I've seen this font all over Pinterest, isn't it fantastic? Like, oh my God, let's think of something new, like get out, you know, come on, I've seen this, I've seen this trend, I've seen this trend up, it's out, let's think of something different. I, so for me, I remind myself to look at things like this, to be inspired by things like this, to, um, to drink in um, the pieces that are original, that are bold, that are vibrant, and make me feel more excited and confident about what I can do. Because if these girls can do this, you know, hopefully they can help me move through my day. Um, love fills you up. Um, love can let it all hang out. In thinking about what I need to make me happy with what I do, I need to go out and I need to hear live music. It fills me up. It is something that connects me with myself. It connects me and my husband. Our love came out of the fun we had going to see live music. It makes me a better person. It makes me a better mom. I come home, I look at all the mamas dropping their kids off, I'm like, I was up to one o'clock last night <laughs> dancing. I'm still here, I'm still being mommy. But I went out, I danced, I let it all out. We all have something that does that for us. We all have, whether it is, something that is reflective, something that is quiet, something that is easy, something that you do alone, something that you do with each other, something that you do with 5,000 people. And you're all in it at the same time. We all have something that fills you up. If you don't fill yourself up, you are not going to put out your best work or you're not going to feel like you're being true to yourself. And I keep circling back because we are creative mornings. Being creative is hard. Selling your creation, your ideas, is hard. But when you fill yourself up with those things in your life that make you more confident in who you are, you're going to sell it. You're going to convince, not convince, you're going to assure people that your idea is the one that they should go with. You're going to assure people that you say, listen, I get what you want, I want what you want, but I don't want you to have what every other person has had. And what I've seen all over Pinterest and what I've seen all over blogs, I want you to have what comes from the heart. Um, so I think for me, to have the confidence to be able to do that, you have to work towards filling yourself up and making sure that you go out into the world, either a little world or the greater world, and find those things that fill you up. Um, love what you do. Duh. Um, I struggled with this for a minute. Love what you do or love what you are, love what you can be, love what you do. I struggle with being in a business. I struggle with payroll and insurance and bookkeeping and all that stuff that weighs you down. You're saying like, I just want to figure out how to make this girl's wedding the best it can be, but you can't. You have to run your business, but you still have to love what you do. You can get bogged down maybe in this like businessy piece where the rainbow is kind of falling over you. But hopefully you break out of it and you become this kid that's just letting it pour all over you. I'm not saying, you know, like a come to Jesus moment kind of thing, but you have to get out of that business side, and it's hard, to make sure you can keep moving in your creative side. I am eternally grateful for an, um, a position I had with a woman, um, I was 18, 19, 20, amazing photographer, amazing person, she taught me, honey, you can do whatever you want to do. You can be as creative as you want to be. But if you can't run a business, you're just going to be a starving artist. And that has stuck with me and resonated with me. Right? And now the latest term is, you know, uh, if you're not making money, you have a hobby. I'm trying not to have a hobby. <laughs> I'm still not making money. But somehow we're doing okay. Right? So, 
but so this woman, she it really hammered home for me and stuck with me, and I sh and I share it whenever I can because I think that's important. I think that it's important that we all share what has informed us throughout our journeys in starting businesses, being in businesses, working for others, being um, bold to strike out on your own, um, being bold to take chances, to believe in yourself, to believe in your creativity and what you have to offer, um, to strike out on your own, but you still gotta run your business. Um, and, and that is hard, for sure. But it's worth it, because if you do end up having those moments when you see the work that you put out and you know that your clients get it and you see that your clients are excited and engaged um, and, and they're, they're filled up by what you do. I'm fortunate because I get to most often see the direct results of what I do, which is fortunate versus putting out you know, a website, um, you don't get, you maybe get analytics, which I still don't understand. But at least I get to see kind of that immediate reaction that my clients have when I show them what we've created for them. Um, I've seen tears, I've seen joy, I've seen kind of, oh my gosh, I can't believe it. And then I've also seen kind of, oh, what's this? It's okay, girl, have some champagne. But it's okay, you know, it's all right. I get it, I get it. It's, it's, a, it's all a big deal. I get I'm in a world that is a pretty big deal. No pressure. Uh, I still love what I do. One of the things that um, helps me love what I do is something that I call creative adventuring. Uh, excuse me, creative adventuring. I love playing. I think we should all play. Regardless of what it's gonna do for our clients, for our project, um, one quick story, I had a Valentine's Day idea. Brie McDonald. So Brie, come on over. I have this idea, I've got balloons and glitter and I wanna make a GIF, I don't even know what that is, but I wanna put out a newsletter and let's just, I went to iParty and I got helium and let's just do it. It had nothing to do with anything that I had to do for my clients, but it had everything to do with me and everything to do with what fills me up and had everything to do with just playing. I have not laughed so hard as I did that day I had a new event manager. She had maybe been with us maybe a few weeks. She said it was the best day of work ever. How awesome is that? Like if you have employees, you want them to say, that was the best day of work ever. Because how many of us walk away saying, I got to play with balloons, or I got to do something completely different than sitting in front of a computer. Um, I recently created something for my own website. My end to kind of commenting on beautiful days is that it's all checklists. It really is. Just keeping track and juggling. But it is not a desk job. And if it is, then you got to get out, at least for me, personally, in that creative world. Um, so definitely, you got to love what you do. you got to go out and do things that make you love what you do, that make you excited to come back to work, no matter what it is. Um, balloons. It, it was a fun day. I should share it with you all. It was a good one. Duh. right let love rule how could I not like beyond the total coolness and kick assness of this guy right what he put out there is music let love rule we all need to live with that we all need to keep that to ourselves it should be one of our commandments in our daily life let love rule whether it drives you towards sticking to your conviction of what you think is right for your client, regardless of how informed they think they are, because they are hiring us for a reason, right? They're hiring us because we're their professionals. I hate using air quotes, but I still have a long way to go until I feel like I'm fully a professional in what I do, because we're always figuring stuff out. There's, a, you know, there's always a stumbling block. There's always something that you're learning about, um, but if you let love rule in your daily life, in your work, and, it's, and it is hard, um, then your work will come through. The people who you want to work with and the people who want to work with you will come to you. If you find yourself in that wheelhouse of client, if all of a sudden you're like, huh, I've got these clients and they're, all, they're my people. They're, they get me, I get them, they trust me, 
which is a huge piece, I think, especially in the creative world. Um, I do not envy people who have to explain something beyond a napkin wrap in a menu and a little like cutie patootie thing on top of it to make it pretty. Like web design, I, I couldn't wrap my head around that. I know what I like, I know what's pretty. I want to seek out people who get what I want and I trust that they're going to do the job for me that I want because they're awesome, because they're cool, because they kind of get me, I get them, and I want to work together. So that is part of what I think makes any creative endeavor or business um, successful is the collaboration piece. That reaching out to people in your community, like what we're doing today, to collaborate and connect and work together and just to meet different people. I say, you know, I like you, I wanna to get to know you more. What do you do? What have you learned along in, in your journey of, of um, your work, of your creation, of your relationships with your clients? How do you manage employees? I'm a small, I'm not even a small business, I'm micro, right? Like, I'm in my own little world. It's a great world, I love it. I'm extremely fortunate to have what I have, but I need to get out. And I, you know, I remember the first day I met Wendy Friedman. I like her. I want to hang out with her. She's gonna, she's gonna be one of my people. And I actively saw, right? Like you, that's true. You know, that's true. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that not being um, um, nervous or not being concerned about putting yourself out there, about connecting with people, about saying, let's sit down for cocktails because I like what you're about and I want to find out more. Um, I think that's really, really important, and that comes back to just letting that love rule you and your decisions. Um, I think that if you let love rule what you're doing, it brings an authenticity, it brings a joy, it brings confidence. Even though some days you might have it, I put on my cowboy boots because I need a little kick today to get me up here and going and feel good about what I'm doing. Um, but, you know, let it just keep filling you up and ruling your day. Um, sharing what turns you on with others. I think that's really important. Doesn't, you know, it doesn't matter to me if you don't like, you know, brass bands from New Orleans, but it's something that really turns me on. If they don't know about it, I want to share it. It's like, oh my gosh, you don't know about this? You should because it's awesome and it's, and it's part of our cultural history and it's totally unique and there's nothing like it around here. Check it out, you know, ju just to kind of Leave those little nuggets along in your day that people might pick up and they might check out and that they might be inspired by. Don't be afraid to share what is important to you, what fills you up, what turns you on, because it'll trickle down. Um, so back to my work. Are you feeling it? This is one of the direct results of what I have the honor to do. Brie McDonald, her wedding, which I was able to help create with many other talented people. I never lose sight of that. I can be pretty cocky. I can pretty, be pretty self-centered. I can definitely be a control freak. That's part of the job. But I never lose sight that I cannot do what I do without the help, insight, collaboration, and creation creativity and energy of others. Um, I made that little headpiece before it was trendy. You knew, you knew. Now they're everywhere. But look, it's beautiful. They're feeling it. Oops. This was a divine wedding, absolutely beautiful. They already have one child, they have a second coming, so happy for them. Couldn't have asked for a more picture perfect day, right? Like, look at this. Who gets this? Some of my clients do. Not because I have control over the weather. I can control just about anything else, but I cannot guarantee that. But this bride, in all her beauty and confidence, she chose a dress that was so different from what everyone else was choosing, that was on the runway, that was different from everyone else, granted, she had a little more money than some, but she chose something that was so different. And when I saw her in that, and when I compared her to everything else I've seen, everything else I'm seeing, I said that, you know, good for her. 
she chose something that is so far from what every other Susie Q is doing. And plus, she was awesome. And they're feeling it. These guys. These guys loved a party. I love a party. They wanted a throw down, get down, have fun, let it all out party, but yet still a rustic elegant something in Maine in a barn. I helped them make that because I got them. I got what they wanted. I got what the parents wanted too. I was really involved with her mom in this one and I loved her mom. Generous, sweet, warm. She filled me up. Their personal stories filled me up. I think that one of the things that I try and do, because I do have um, a connection with my clients that spans five, six, seven, eight, 12, 15 months, kind of get to know them. We brought in a DJ from LA, because he was awesome, and I had him at another wedding. I love to stay local, but if they want someone who's gonna throw down, I'm gonna go find someone for them. That's what fills me up, that's what filled them up, that was an awesome wedding. These gentlemen had one of the most beautiful, intimate, picture-perfect starry summer nights along the coast of Maine that anyone could ever ask for. It was small, it was easy, it was lovely, and I got to be a part of that. And they trusted me in being a part of that. And I think that's a big piece, is that trust in saying, whatever you want, I will support and I'll guide you through that. Um, they're feeling it. These guys, they're so much fun. He was so much fun, he loves her. And I got to be a part of creating that scene for that. He wanted to introduce his bride. No one's ever kind of said that to me. You know, I'd really love to introduce my bride and the whole wedding thing. I don't know, last time anyone's been to a wedding, but um, I said, yeah, that's a great idea. Emily Post would probably say no, but fuck that. Like if you want to say, and for the first time, here comes my bride, my wife, the woman I'm committed to for the next, I don't know, 50, 60, till death to us part, fuck yeah, like let's do it. So that's where, regardless of what kind of structure there is or what Emily Post might say or what Martha Stewart might say, if my client wants something that is different, I'm gonna support it. And since he's done that, I've suggested it to other clients. So his, what fills him up and what he was excited about trickled down to me and then I bring it up to my clients and I've had other clients use it. And it's fun, it's great, why not? They're feeling it. Like how many people, I was so psyched when I said, well, of course, confetti guns at the end of the night. If they're gonna let us do it, let's do it. Why not? Why not? It's awesome. It was one of the best ends of the nights ever. And it's confetti. And it's fun. And their guests had fun. No one was worrying about, you know, where to go to next. They were engaged in what was happening around them. Um, which, to me, I just finally relaxed at the end of the night. Like I, We worked towards this, we found the freaking little poppers off Amazon, we packaged them, we handed them out, we're worried they're gonna clean it up. Finally, we got to relax after everyone, and it worked. It's like, yay, we took a chance, we did it. How can it go wrong? It's confetti. They're feeling it, for sure. They're on baby number two. Love it, already. She, New York City girl, whole trip, love her, amazing, dynamic. Everyone was drawn to her. She calls me and says, well, I just saw um, a, a, a band in the subway in the city. It's one of those bands that plays on the buckets. And I want to combine it with my DJ. i like, okay. <laughs> First of all, I love that idea. How awesome. Second of all, okay, we're working with DJ. How's this gonna work? These guys are from New York. What are we gonna pay them? What's their contract? You know, so the business side of me is like, okay, great, we'll do it. But then there's that, are they gonna, do they take credit cards, right? <laughs> like, do we just need to give them cash? Are they gonna put out a, because they were literally playing in the subways of New York City. Um, not that they haven't performed before. They roll up in this van. You know, all of them, you were there. Two in the morning, and then they roll out. They're like, yeah, we're going back to New York. Ah, it, but it worked. It was awesome. It was something different, and I supported my client in that, and that infused my continuing work with my clients. Do something different. Have fun with it. If you like something, if you see something, if you're inspired by something, put it out there. Why not? 
Literally, why not? It was fun, it was unique, it was awesome. Uh, it was a trip, for sure. I loved it. This, for me, is one of, um, because I know this couple, um, and got to know them for a while. Um, this is, they're feeling it because it's kind of something that's finally, it's happened for them. Because of the, whatever they went through to get to this point, to finally share the celebration, share with their family, their friends, their children, that they were here. Didn't meet him till like the day before the wedding. Loved him right away. Loved him right away. She was amazing. I connected with her personal family story and the challenges they had. I connected with him as soon as I met him and the relationship he has with her daughter and that she has with his son and the family that they made together. And knowing that about my clients informed me more along the way about how to make the best day for them and to reflect everything that was coming together for them. Brie McDonald, nice picture. These two, I'm almost done, I know, I'm sorry. Like, awesome. She chose this dress during a time where I swear to goodness I saw a million gorgeous lace dresses. Every bride for about three years, lace dresses. She sends me a pic between this and another one that was super hot. I said, girl, go with this. I have not seen this on anyone here. She's a New York City girl. She's bringing it to Maine. She brought it to Maine, right? So she, Maine is a special place to them, but she didn't let it necessarily define what she was going to wear didn't necessarily let it define. Who shows up in a white morning, a white suit jacket? I love that. Dates Garvin wore one. My husband, New Year's Eve, a long, long time ago. Dashing, <laughs> dashing, fun, fun, different. They went for it, and I love that. And I, these guys inspired me so much. They brought in a DJ from New York City, gave me a little attitude. Like, you don't know where I've been. <laughs> like, just throw it down. It's okay, we've got this. Uh, ton of fun. They're feeling it. Love this. Warm, happy, fun, amazing party. Small. They did it themselves. They didn't have a lot of money, but they brought together their people who they loved. They brought together their people who would contribute to their day. I was one of their people. I was like, I'll do flowers, of course. I'll show up. I'll help. Of course. This is a reflection on what can happen when you call on your people to help you. When you look to others to share the love and when you look to others to bring the love. For me, it's peace, love, and parties. Carry that with you through today. Go out there, kick ass, and have fun. I went over, I'm sorry. It's okay, but the best part for me is always the dialogue that happens with the speaker after. So we've got about 10 minutes or so um, for the audience to ask questions of Kate and each other. Um, and Monty, though, thank you for bringing the lights up a little bit. Thank you so much. And so does anyone have a question or something they want to ask or say? And Okay, that was incredible. Thank you so much. Um, that was definitely probably the most inspiring talk I've heard, and that's because you can feel that you love it. Um, so I just wanted to ask your feelings about um, if you're faced with, you talked about just it, the importance of collaborating and connecting outside of your, your world. Are you faced with people that um, kind of have the mindset more of competition rather than collaboration when you approach them? And how do you help deal with that? First of all, competition only makes you better. I accept it. There's competition out there. Just makes you humble and keeps you going. Hopefully, I'm reaching out to people who aren't intimidated by competition. Um, when I, I, I try and reach out to people who turn me on, who, who kind of get, you know, kind of that spirit, that play, that adventuring, whatever it is, um, I, I probably, 
I, I am lucky that I live um, in a community and also work within an industry that does rely on so many different creative people, the photographers, the caterers, uh, the musicians, um, the, the filmmakers. Um, so when I do play, I try and call on those people who kind of get it. People like Brie McDonald and Wendy, we've done some noodling around. You know, I just, um, I, I, it, I think it goes back to me just, regardless of the industry, I mean, there's other people who I reach out to, um, I don't know if Amy's here, but um, people who just kind of, I like and admire and want to get to know and um, just kind of cultivate relationships that um, just kind of inform me and make me a better person and hopefully a little more creative and also hopefully smarter about the business I do. That's a challenge too. Yeah, thanks. Yeah. <clears throat> my name is David Frater, and in my various incarnations, I'm a Unitarian Universalist minister. Ah. And ministers and, and uh, clergy are counterparts to event planners. You have the most important job <laughs> of the day. And one of the wonderful freedoms of our particular tradition is I'm free to create the exact right ceremony for any couple that I work with. And mm -hmm. I say that to them all the time. Um, and I'm willing to do almost any of you they want. Not underwater, not out of an airplane. <laughs> so it's your limitations, not theirs. No, okay. So it's not exactly a question, but just yeah. a comment, and that is that um, <clears throat> I love the opportunity to be creative with people to create the just right wedding for them. At the same time, my responsibility as someone who has expertise and has done this for a long time is to be able to say at some points, you know, Maybe not. Oh, I do that. Yeah, I get so, it. Yeah. So that was the question. How yeah. do you approach people when you know that they're heading off the deep end? <laughs> you know it for a fact. There's yeah. not any question here. Sometimes people have, really good people have yeah. really awful ideas. <laughs> I want to bring all seven of my two-year-old nieces down the aisle. Like, all right. Don't sugar them up. How do you approach that? How do you um, well, first of all, I will say I was having a conversation with one of my lovely brides last night, and she was commenting on her ceremony, and um, we were asking, talking about her readings, and she had asked her father and her groom's father to choose readings of their own to read, and her dad chose something from some obscure Jennifer Lopez movie. Like, who does that? <laughs> I don't even know what the movie is, and I love movies. But, it was, you know, she kind of, yeah, no, it was, no, I can dance. No, I can no. dance. You can dance. Uh, whatever it was. <laughs> but I told her right away. And I know, she was, this has been a challenge throughout this about how many times I say love in my day, how many times I might say cute in my day. I never thought I'd say cute so many times in my life. Um, but I told her that I really appreciated, encouraged, and supported that choice that she made. My husband and I made the same choice when we got married, to have our moms choose whatever they wanted to read. Um, I think when people start maybe going down a road that I think doesn't feel, it's more about if it feels right for them in the overall. Because I really do try and engage my clients early on with a, um, a questionnaire about, not just about what they want out of the day. Everyone wants an awesome day, right? But it's an eight hour day. I wanna know about you as people, what you want, um, you know, what kind of magazines hang around your house? What kind of date nights do you have? Um, what is most important? I don't, I don't necessarily care about the colors right away. That falls into place. What's most important to you? So they start bringing up stuff that really is a departure, at least from where I sit, from what their intent is, what they want from the beginning. I'll circle back. And I'll also circle back and say, but hey, don't you remember that you really wanted to thank your guests in some way? We haven't figured that out yet. Is that something still important? I say, yeah, it is. So well, let's figure that out. So um, I, I do not put down um, a fist. I'm a, I guide gently. I'll tell people if I think it's something that's been overdone or too much, or I encourage doing something different. I, you know, which is cha which is really challenging in weddings. If you're creative, it's part of your yeah. expertise. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And you know, hopefully people you know groove with it and go. Yeah. All right. Yes. Oh, Amy, I can count on you. So. I don't have a question, but I have to tell you a really quick story that I think is good for this room because I'm not sure if I've ever told you this story, but I've told it to so many other people. And many years ago, Kate and I have known each other a long time. Many years ago. I come to your wedding. 
you helped at your my wedding, wedding was, before what, yeah. you even had beautiful days, but but this is about a wedding I helped you with oh my God, that's right. when you were starting out and you taught me to do this one thing. So you gave me all these instructions for what to do with She was seven months pregnant, by the way. Kick ass. And the wedding was on a hill, but we're not going to talk about that. <laughs> you, you, you had double booked a couple weddings, so I took on this one wedding, and, I, and you'd done all of the work, so I just had to be there that day. So I was there to help the bride and groom get through the day. But you gave me this one tip that was, I think, the most important moment of the night, and I bet you do it for everyone. I've told this story so many times, because I think it's so, it, it relates both to weddings, but also to your earlier part of your talk about being creative and loving what you do. I pulled the, the bride and groom aside at some point during the dancing and you know made it look like we were having this intensive conversation over in the corner really to get everyone else away from them for two minutes. Mm -hmm. And I said, I just need you to pause and look around this room. And you told me to do this and I love that you told me this because weddings we know go so fast. Yep. Events where we come together and are having the time of our lives go so fast. And it was the one that moment, and they wrote in the letter to me later about this, how they just could see, I said, everyone in this room loves you and they're here just for you. Yeah. All of the work came to this moment. Just take it in because you've got to remember all of this yeah. and not just the chaos of how fast it goes. Yeah. And I wanted to thank you for telling me to tell them and I just, and I think it, but I also think it relates to our creative work yeah. and pausing and saying, God, I get to do this and yeah. this is awesome. Yeah, I, I tell that to all my clients now the night before the wedding, yeah. if I have the opportunity. The ones that we work on more levels with than just kind of showing up and installing pretty things. I tell them, and we got that advice from our friend Drew before we got married. Step back, take it in, yeah. drink it in, let it fill you up, because it does go quick. Um, m those mental pictures, but take in all the work and the love that has been shared. Again, I think that we're lucky, or at least I'm lucky that we get to see those immediate results of what we do. Sometimes I don't absorb it all until maybe I see the pictures. <laughs> um, but yeah, that was a good one. Those guys, I think, recess to like a Snoop Dogg song, right? That was awesome. Yeah. Love them. <laughs> right? Uh, that's right. They were fun. Yeah. They've got a baby now, too. Yeah, I love keeping up with that. Um, and I just, I will mention just real quick, one of the reasons why I named Beautiful Days Beautiful Days is that it's, it's from a song that kind of carried th me through some challenging times, but also beautiful times in its own way. Um, but that I do remind my clients that their wedding day is not the one and only beautiful day. That there are going to be so many more beautiful, challenging, love, you know, whatever it is, whether it's a day on the beach playing bocce ball with your son and your husband, or if it's, um, you know, a 10 year anniversary, or if it's sharing in the birth of your first grandson, whatever it is, whatever those beautiful days are. So and I, I do think that um, reminding my clients that what the definition of a beautiful day is helps. And I think that also helps me to remember that being creative, doing something beautiful, isn't, doesn't have to be this big, ginormous, impactful thing. It can be small, it can be intimate, it can kind of take you by surprise um, and be right in front of you when you don't know it. Yeah. All right, everyone, thank you so Thanks. much for coming. Let's give